Hello everyone, I'm Yves Lai. Today I'm going to talk about compact, efficient, and UC secure isogeny based of leafy transfer. This is a joint work with Stephen Galbraith and Stephen the Pack the same weekend. Firstly, we recall the circumstance of an oblique transfer protocol. There are two parties, Alice and Bob, or say the sender and the receiver. Alice has two messages, and Bob would like to know one of them. And they're doing some steps here. After the execution, there are two requirements. The first one is that Bob gets one and only one message. The second one is that Alice doesn't know Bob's choice. Keep in mind that this is a classical requirement for MOT scheme. Given the importance of um, ability transfer protocol as a cryptography tool, we need a stronger security definition that takes composition into account. The security notion is called universally compatible security, or UC security, which is proposed by Kinetti. This is a simulation-based security definition. In this security definition, the simulator doesn't simulate for the adversary, but for the environment machine. An environment machine is as this graph. Environment machine will observe everything in this world. An environment machine will interact with a real world machine or an ideal world machine, but it doesn't know which one is it. And in the real world machine, there's an adversary and the protocol you design. And in the ideal world, there's a simulator having black box access to the adversary. And in this ideal world, everyone interacts with this trust with a trusted party. So you can find that everything in this world is super secure because every computation is processed by this trusted party. So if you can show that your protocol in the real world machine is indistinguishable to the one created by the simulator in the ideal world machine, then you can say that your protocol has UC security. There are two isogeny based previous OT uh, as follow. And they achieve UC security against semi-honest adversaries, uh, which means that the adversary will follow the protocol execution, but they try to learn more information from the execution. Based on this, by adding um, UC secure linearity proof or using some generic transform like this, the protocol can upgrade to UC secure against malicious adversaries. But this, uh, but malicious adversary means that uh, the adversary is now required to follow the protocol specification. But it will take a polynomial number of isogenic computations because at the current stage, some uh, CSI relevant or SIDH relevant zero knowledge proof or security scheme, they will take a polynomial number of isogenic computations. So our research question is that, can we have an isogeny based OT that is UC secure against malicious adversary and takes only a constant number of isogeny computations? And next, our for our crypto system, the isogeny tool we rely on is called CSI. So here we give a fast recap of CSI, give it an R prime P, and Mongaro curve is one variable is defined as the following form. An elite curve defined in prime view is said to be super singular if the group order is p plus one. And let all be an order of imaginary quadratic field and let pi be an element in this order. We let this set Mexico E collect all super singular defined over Fp and module F P isomorphism. And these curves and the morphisms ring defined over Fp are isomorphic to this order. And where this order element pi corresponds to the Frobenius map, which means it maps to map x, y to x to dp and y to dp. We know that the ideal class group of this order will act freely and transitively on this set. And we also use some proposition of quadratic twist in our work. So here we uh, recall the definition of quadratic twist. A quadratic twist of curve defined over Fp is after the following form. There's one more coefficient in front of y square. 
and this the coefficient is quadratic non-residue. And there are three following propositions for quadratic twist. The first one is that if you take a twist for AE, then you got A inverse E twist. And moreover, uh, if when P equals 3 minus 4, if you take two twists of E0, it's still E0. And EA twist equal to EA negative A. And equality here means FP isomorphic. So accordingly, when P equals 3 minus 4, if you take twist of AE0, you got A inverse E0 for any group element in this ideal class group. And we will need to simplify the notation as the following way, the group and the set. And we also ignore the class notation. We also assume that we have uniform sampling of this ideal class group. Uh, if you, you can do this by using like CFISH parameter or say C one 112 parameters. And to have a crypto system, we have some, some computation assumptions. The first one is the most well-known one that is called computational CSAT problem. Uh, you are given three curves, E, and AE, and BE, and your task is to find ABE. This is quite similar to um, diffie hermann problem. You are given G and G to the A, G to B. Your task is to find G to the AB. And we have another uh, relaxed version that is called C square CSAT problem. You are given one curve only, AE, and your task is to find a square e. But actually, if you are given the order of this ideal class group, then these two problems are equivalent. A proof for this case is uh, for case p equals 3 minus 4 can be found in this thesis. And for the other part of the proof can be found in our appendix. The proof using the fact that um, the CLO2 subgroup of this ideal class group is of rank 1. And next, we introduce a new uh, assumption that is called reciprocal seaside problem. The reciprocal seaside problem is a two-round experiment defined as the following way. There are also a two, there's also a public curve E, and two parties, Alice and Bob, also the challenger and the adversary. And the other adversary send a curve to the challenger first, and challenger will send AE to Bob, and Bob's task is to find a E and A inverse E. Uh, the reciprocal seaside problem looks a bit weird, but actually you can see that this problem is as hard as the square seaside problem. Firstly, we're going to show that the reciprocal seaside problem is not uh, harder than square seaside problem. So you are given the curve, and we let the adversary commit to the same public curve. And then you obtain a challenge AE, and your task now is to find AE and A in first E. But actually, you can find that you already got AE, so your task now is, is just to find A in first E. We invoke the square CSI oracle, and we obtain a C. We're going to show that C is equal to A in first E. Because you can write E as A in first AE, so the square is an oracle will square this part, so that's why you got A in first E. And next, we're going to show that the reciprocal seaside problem is not easier than square seaside problem. In this proof, we'll, use, we'll show this by using rewinding argument. Say so the challenge is E and A, and now your task is to find A square E. We invoke the oracle with the public curve AE, and after oracle commits to a curve X, we give E as the challenge to the oracle. And then we got the output, we extract the first entry, and we rewind the oracle, and we replace the challenge from E to be the first entry we just got. And then you execute the oracle, we got two curves, and we extract the second one. We are going to show that the second entry x2 prime 
is equal to a squared e. Since we can write e as a inverse a, so we have x1 equal a inverse ax. And thanks to the transitive action, we can write x as small xe. So you can write x1 as the following way. And by definition, the oracle will inverse this part and act on x. So that's why you got a inverse, sorry, a squared e. So we have shown that the reciprocal C side problem is as hard as square C side problem. So when you are given the order of this group, you can say the reciprocal C side problem is as hard as the computational C side problem. And next, we are going to show our construction of our belief field transfer. Uh, firstly, we have two, two parties. We start from a three round construction, and Alice and Bob will say the sender and receiver, and Alice has two messages, and Bob would like to know one of them. Firstly, Alice sends AE to, to Bob, and Bob computes BE or BA and sends to Alice. Alice then computes AB and A inverse B as the decryption keys for, for these messages. And she encrypts this message with using discrete keys. So in this way, Bob can decrypt one and only one message. The idea can be visualized as the following graph. Here's Alice and Bob, and Alice has to Alice send this AE to Bob, and Bob can compute ABE or BE to Alice. If Bob said ABE to Alice, Alice then computes these two curves as the decryption keys. And as for Bob, he can compute this key, but he cannot compute this one unless he can solve a square C side problem. So in this case, you can show you can see that that's why Bob can decrypt one and only one message. And the same argument can apply to the other case. The next step is that we use quadratic twist to, to compress the run of our protocol from three run into two run. Firstly, Bob computes B and B or B twist sent to Alice, where B is the public curve. Then Alice again computes A B or A inverse B and use these curves as the decryption key to encrypt the message and send the ciphertext to Bob. In this case, Bob can also get one and only one message. We can visualize in the same way. Here is Bob. Bob will compute BE or BE twist to Alice, and Alice will compute AE to Bob. In this way, Bob can compute this decryption key and he cannot compute the other decryption key unless he can solve a computational problem. And the same argument can apply for the other case. Uh, but rem remember that this is not a rigorous proof, but it gives you an intuition how this crypto system can work. And next, to have uh, UC security, we need to simulate for the corrupt receiver and corrupt sender. To simulate corrupt receiver, we use a standard approach by using the non-committing encryption or one-time one path, for example. And we produce Dumi ciphertext to produce and produce the corresponding key later. We use um, we add a me mechanism for this, so it will take one additional round for our crypto system. So our final product is three rounds instead of two rounds. And next, uh, for the other side of simulation, we develop a new tool for SRG cryptography that is called quadratic twist trapdoor. The key idea here is we you, we set up a trapdoor with a protocol C side problem. So how to set up a reciprocal C side problem trapdoor? Firstly, we compute a random group element. 
and we use this curve as the public curve for this for this problem. And then the adversary commit to a random curve by generating generating a random and group element. After receiving E prime from the challenger, you return this bunch of things. And you can observe that the first entry is correct. So we only need to show the correctness for the second entry. Because of transitivity, we can write E prime as the following way. And because x equal b e, so it suffices to show that it satisfies the following form. And then by using the proposition of quadratic twist we just we just mentioned, we can write, we can see that the left hand side is equal to right hand side. So we show the correctness of this trapdoor algorithm. So how to use this trapdoor algorithm to complete the other half of simulation? First, in the circumstance like there's an adversary corrupt the sender Alice, and Alice has two, two message, but he will she will not uh, encrypt she may not encrypt these two messages. She, she can do anything she wants. So firstly, we set out a trapdoor for the public key curve E here. And then we involve the reciprocal suicide problem solver to generate this B element for the Bob or say the receiver. And then upon receiving, receiving this curve AE from Alice, then we invoke the problem solver to extract two, two curves. And we use these two curves as the decryption key to decrypt the cipher text. And then the simulator send these two messages to the trusted party in the ideal world and complete the simulation. So in this world, we have shown that uh, we have given uh, a certain base ability transfer that is used to secure against malicious adversaries. And it took only a constant number of isogenic computations. In particular, it's five as a computation for the sender and four for the receiver. And these two are the previous work we just mentioned. And the third one is a concurrent work, but their main focus is not on oblivion transfer. They just mentioned an OT construction. So we take their construction into this table. And moreover, our unreliable assumption for our crypto system, the reciprocal CSI problem is as hard as the computational suicide problem. But keep in mind that the reduction is not tight. It takes one more, it, it, you need to call the oracle several times. And finally, we also point out some uh, open problems relevant to this topic. The first question is that, uh, can we have a quantum friendly reduction between reciprocal suicide problem and the suicide problem? Uh, this is because uh, the reduction we just used, we use rewinding argument. We take an input out, we measure it, and we rewind the oracle and take the output back. So um, this, but uh, there is no such operation in a quantum machine. So our question is that can we have a quantum friendly redu reductions between the reciprocal CSI problem and the computational CSI problem? And the second question is that, can we have a uh, run optimal efficient isogeny based OT? Run optimal means two runs because uh, our final product is three runs. We want to have, we want to simulate the corrupt receiver. So the additional mechanism takes one more round for this. So our question is that, can we have a two round efficient isogeny based OT? The third question is that, can we have an efficient adaptive UC secure isogeny based OT? Adaptive adversary means that the adversary can choose the who to corrupt after the execution. And the adversary we deal with is called static adversary. Adversary will choose who to corrupt uh, at, the at the beginning of the execution. So, but this makes the security proof a bit different. 
So our question is that can we have an efficient adaptive UC secure as a journey based OT? And thanks for listening. Bye bye. <laughs>